everybody, welcome back to Truck Talk. As always, giving praise and glory to the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I know the last few videos have been bouncing around everywhere, you know. I remember talking about the glaciers melting and all this flooding and disasters and fires. Man, I just can't hide the gold. God's given us warning. We still won't listen. God's telling us in advance these things are happening. They're going to happen. But our minds are so focused on this world. I just want to lift up Hawaii right now. That's going through that uh, devastation. And you know, it's not just there. It's everywhere. It's you got sex trafficking, you got uh, pe people going without food, and it's, man, sometimes you just don't got the words. I was driving a little bit ago, and I seen this electric billboard, it says, missing, they, you know, they give you the vehicle and the plate number and all that. I just couldn't help but pray. You know, you don't know what the person looks like, but I kind of had a vision of this person in the back seat, covered up. Most likely, these people will never be seen again. You know, it's a big world we live on when they can disappear. It's sad. You never know when tomorrow isn't going to come. We don't know when the last time we're going to say goodbye are the simple three little words, I love you. But you got to be right. You got to be right with Jesus. What if this second was your last time? You know, we go through suffering. We go through pain. We love our children. We love them the best we can love them. We try to raise them upright. We try to make things go in the direction that they succeed in life and do more than what we had. I remember words sometimes, you know, they just come back and, and I remember my son being upset with me. I remember him saying, you know, out of anger, I'm going to do more than what you ever have done. I could reply back and say, good. I hope you do. Our children are also in the hands and care of us as we do the best we can, like I said, to raise them. Sometimes sickness falls upon them. person reached out to me and sent, sent some videos and pictures. I don't understand sometimes why sickness is if things fall, but I know that God is mercy. I know God has a reason. And sometimes even being the best person we can, we may end up with cancer. We may end up with some kind of sickness that just may just take our breath one day. And I know the pain, I know the mourning, and I know all these things happen because it comes with it. But the Bible clearly states 
there was a time to do all these things, to mourn, to cry, to laugh, to dance. But it doesn't say in there to hate, be angry, go into depression. See, each day is a celebration. Each day we celebrate that we're still here. God still has a plan for us. God still has a reason. To love someone, you have to celebrate the days that God allowed you to have with you. And cherish those days. Because what happens when this world finally comes to that crash and halt? And it's the last of the days of humans on this earth. And you are one of the chosen to go to heaven. What if your child doesn't? Simple three little words, I love you. Now I'm not saying in the case I'm talking about this lady's daughter passed away. I'm talking about that at all. I'm talking the message in general here. We truly love people. We're going to want to see them in heaven. That means we have to live a life that is not okay with the world. That is different than the world. know the pain and the heartache that people have and that not understand I've heard people say I can't live without this person or these children or something in life but confess to be a Christian I'm not saying it's not painful. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying you're not going to go through a time of mourning. And hopefully a time of celebration when you realize that person just went home. I think that's where the mourning comes in for me is if I knew they were a Christian following Jesus Christ, they got to go home and I didn't. You know, I, I, I've heard people talk about suicide, and, and I can think about the times that I've tried it. And I think about the times and things and events that took place. I remember after the first try when I legally was deceased, and I sat two weeks by myself. Now, there was no cell phones, no pagers, nothing like that back in those days. It just disappeared. And I remember thinking, listening to the devil speak, nobody will find you here. Go ahead. You're in my comfort. I'll welcome you. I'll keep you. Oh, I bet you will. See, the thing where things changed and that seed was planted in my head was this. I got to see the torture in hell. Now, when I'm here to tell you that the devil doesn't stop. My whole time on earth until I finally said it, done. It was one thing after the next. 
crashing car, doing stupid stuff. I look back on now going, only God could have kept me alive through these things. It's unexplainable to people. Very unexplainable. I can't explain it. Except for just saying, the Lord Jesus. Think about how many times I cried out to him. How many times he showed me mercy. I remember one time when I was sitting at Lake Anna in Barberton, Ohio. It was getting about fall time. They just got done. Well, not just getting about because I remember the, the, the Mum Festival was two days away. So pretty much was fall, I would imagine. And I remember sitting there, and I remember a voice like, coming down from behind me. Just spoke peacefully. And I said, yes. Now granted, I never looked back. I didn't feel a presence like a person. I felt a presence of peace. I didn't like I just wanted to go to where that place was. And I remember sitting there going, why do we suffer so much? Why does this happen? Where is God in all of this? saying on the cross one day when you find that cross a person was nailed to it you'll find God and what he truly does for his day So as I sat there in my own pity, now it was a cloudy day, in the sky I saw a rainbow. I remember standing there looking down at the water, looking up, going, there's no reflection. friends, at the time, what you think of friends, it's amazing when your life changes, you allow him to mold and sculpt you, all them hands that were reaching out to you to shake your hand, how sudden everybody reaches in for the exit door to leave, how they cast blame, but take no blame what they have done. Two wrongs don't make a right. Even if you are right, doesn't mean you're right. You think about that. In a demonic realm, your tongue is never right if you follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Ever. It's never going to be right. Sometimes people are taken because their purpose is done. Maybe it was just to bring joy for 20 years. Maybe it was to bring joy for 30 years. How many people's lives did one person touch? 
You ever watch the movie It's a Wonderful Life? And they play back. If you were never born, none of this would have happened. Interesting, isn't it? See, we celebrate Jesus' birthday on December 25th. The day we uphold. Now I want you to think about this. Jesus never came to earth to be born as flesh. Unless we have a purpose. Or a reason. We would be doing it. We can't get it right. We can't do it without Him. I know pain is hard. And I know suffering. I remember crying at times. You go into like a hot So beside yourself. And you sit there and think, wow. Why? Why does things happen? You know, I've been there. But today, I didn't know it was coming when I was 10 years old, 15 years old, 22 years old, 25 years old, 35 years old. So why are we living life like we're owed a long time? Instead, we're wasting today. We're wasting today. Spreading the word, trying to bring the ones that we say, I love you, into the great I am, his presence. We're not fulfilling our purpose. Rise up. See, the devil wants us depressed, he wants us to think that there's no end to this sorrow that we're going through. I'm here to tell you, you will smile again. You will laugh again. You will have memories of people that passed away. It's up to you if they're good or bad. You can't hold on to something. You can hold on to memories. Don't hold on to anything but good. What if I told you to hold on to something It'd be like never burying something. After a while, you'd be like, well, no, it doesn't smell so great. Right? Right. And I know some of you might hear this message and go, really? Yeah, really. We hold on to stuff that's... Servant in it. Fulfill the purpose.
held on to my grandmother's for a long time. And all it did is make me sad. Hate you. I went out to the grave not too long ago, trying to so I can take pictures to send to my older sister. Looking down at this, this uh, tombstone, it's one of them ones that lay flat. I remember looking down, going, "Wow, it's been that long." I couldn't even remember what year she passed away. Why do I bring that up? Glad you asked. Because it too will pass. I wasted enough time looking at this world and wondering why God is doing something. And then I started realizing God has me here for a purpose. I need to find this purpose. I need to find the reason and the plan He has for my life. I think back, Darlene and I were talking over the weekend about the events that are taking place that we were bringing up I brought up the glacier, I brought up the, the volcanoes, and I brought up forests and trees just burning and burning all over. It wasn't going to stop. It was going to go like a ping pong. Wherever the ping pong would land, things would start to burn. So look at it. Some people well, you know, you should call these places, give them warning. God's been giving us warning for a long time. This stuff is all over the place. We were staying at the Walmart. I was waiting on Darlene to come out of the restaurant and I was going to go. We already paid for our stuff. Sometimes I go before her, either way. And I mean, look up at that board. And as I looked up at that board, I started looking at some of the dates on there that people were missing. Sometimes I pray, Lord, just give me the place where they are. Alive or deceased. So those families can have closure. See, I look at life different. I look at someone passing away as a good or bad. Depends on where you were at in life. Everybody wants to believe that their family members go to heaven. If you didn't follow God's ways, to tell you most likely not. Some people don't believe it. And I was like, well, listen to the near-death experiences. There's people in hell. It was never meant to be like that. Just doing good deeds and good things and being nice, but yet your house is full of demonic things. Because you put it on a cross. Doesn't mean you're going to heaven. wants us to live on 
moments of sadness. And he wants us to be trapped in that moment. He wants us to believe that we're never going to see this person again. That's a good possibility. He's, as much as I want to say this, the liar of all liars is telling you the truth. If that person wasn't of God, then you are. Likely you're not going to see. Me. What about my child that was five years old? I would say yes. If you're a follower and you're doing everything to the best of your ability to do it, you're loving people, you're helping out, you're doing good works for God and Jesus, not for the glory of man. Because you got hit in the moment, I'm not saying you're still not going to go to heaven. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying, you got to be careful. Why are you doing things? If it's for yourself, it doesn't do a lot of help and good for God. Now it doesn't. And in places where that you don't know. I mean, going in there to fix something in an apartment, and I was like, oh, is your child off of college? No, they're deceased. I was like, oh, sorry to hear that. How long has it been? This lady tells me four years. And I'm looking at a room like four years put her in high school. You're living as she's coming home. No. It's not healthy. It's not. Why would you want to bring heartache and pain to you. know, you watch some of these movies where people go in there and ask to pray over the person that's done wrong to their family or maybe murdered their children or drinking and driving. Either way, people go in there and you hear them screaming, trying to attack them. First of all, if it's a demonic entity that's in that person, they're not going to care what you do. But instead, to go in and ask to pray over the person will be one of the hardest things you probably ever had to do. And ask God for forgiveness. person asked me once, what if someone killed your family with a gun? Would you wear a gun around your neck? And I said, yes, I would. The gun didn't do nothing. The cross did. The cross saved our souls. We have forgiveness through that cross cross stands for something more powerful than anything on this earth. We can look at it how we want to look at it. When you're feeling sad, lift it up to Jesus. Go to that cross, kneel down to it, say, here, I'm in pain today. Help. But why don't we seek Jesus just in bad times? Angry. We should be giving him thanksgiving to everything. When you 
you can go and thank Jesus for everything in your life, good or bad. You're growing in life. Nowhere in the Bible to say our lives are going to be easy. Matter of fact, it speaks of the opposite. I think about what Jesus took on that day. He was arrested, punched, kicked, knocked down. Same thing to him in the cells. beating. After that horrible beating, he went to the cross. After the cross, he went into the grave. After delivering, taking on all sin. After he took on all sin, he went out of the grave, went into hell, defeated hell. really have a lot of room to complain about anything. Because I've never seen him walk across. And I've never seen him fall and stand back up. I remember watching him get beaten, hearing him moan. And he stood up and smiled. Been beaten. But I've never been beaten that bad. You look at the Bible, you look at where we're at, you look at the things that are going around. Why aren't we praying? Asking for peace in these people's life that are suffering through loss. Because it doesn't hit our home. Then you got people standing out there that are reaching out. It's kind of like sometimes the devil even twists his things to make you feel like, well, it's all your fault that this is happening. Kind of like with the granddaughter, you know, or my wife and myself. I got to spend a lot of time with her on the weekends, but I did so many of the other grandchildren. And I remember telling Darlene Junga's daughter one day, because she's like, you know, you can get close with me. Chloe, and I was like, no. One day you're going to take her away. You're going to hold all this power in your hand. You're going to realize. And she did it for a long time. She did it to the uh, Chloe's other grandma, which was her dad's mom. End up going to the court for rights and all this stuff. And I, for the longest time, I kept hearing the devil, it's your fault. And I go back to when did all this stuff change? When we were going back to Florida and she was staying up here because of her lifestyle that she was in. You know, and I think about these days and I think about these events. Just sitting there thinking in my head, going, huh. What if I never did that? What if I just waited to the end? Because, you know, there's a lot of stuff that changed, change of events, you know? And, uh, 
until you question it. You know, like, wow, if I would have never done this, or if I would have never done that, and the devil just makes it your fault, your fault, your fault, and your wife has to suffer because of what you've done. Now, I can tend to believe all that, or I can go just, you know what, shut up. I'm tired of listening to you. Give me one second. Trucking people, truck. What are you gonna do? I just didn't want to pause. I mean, I am gonna do a part two to this because uh, I got the tablet back there. I was looking for it real quick, but I couldn't find it. Because I just came back out of the house, so um, I wrote down some of the stuff that I wanted to do this video for this lady losing her daughter and uh, you know we can listen all night and day to things we know the devil's presence we know he wants to rob, kill and destroy us so he's going to do it he's going to do it however and unfortunately it's happening more and more you know I guess we need a national day of prayer today we can pray anytime we want. What'd you pray for today? Did you pray for peace? Did you pray for protection over your family? What about your neighbors? What about teachers? What about these, these pastors and stuff that are in these churches? What about these wildfires? See, I just pray for God's will to be done over this earth as it will be in heaven. And I accept whatever happens because I know he's got a bigger purpose and plan than I can ever see. Yes, it's sad when people lose their lives. People were losing lives all day long. of things that are going to change here I keep seeing into 2024 I keep seeing a lot of changes not for the good either you know, the rising economy as they're calling it robotic stuff When it's too much, too much, I think we're standing in it. I really do. Some some nights I wake up heavy hearted with the things I see. And I ask the Lord, when do you want me to speak of these things? Some he tells me now, and others he doesn't tell me anything. So I wait. We gotta understand that nothing here is forever. And it's not ours. 
gives us stuff to enjoy while we're here. So, we sure are not taking it with us. I've seen funerals where you walk in there. Shake my head like, wow. Really? And I know a lot of people say things like, why'd you do that? The person's not here. And I, I stay true to my word. Prayer, we tend to just talk about ourselves instead of the things that are really going on around us. When you can put yourself last, it calls you to the front. Through that traveling, oh, the glory. Wow. Front sit. Same as we will the celebration. We don't have to be glorified by man. I want to be glorified in the Lord's presence. I want to be in that glory of Him. all these people that come up missing and all these people that their lives are short here I'm wanting to go home so bad I don't want to be here I feel kind of selfish at times and I feel kind of sad that someone's missing their family members here I am wanting to go walk through valleys of darkness. I don't know what changes you. I walk through the heaven valley. And I walk down that pathway and through those flowers the colors of them and the smells and the butterflies flying. And I hear the birds see the gazebo in the distance. I see my pal Georgie standing up there on the gazebo just smiling at me with his hand up. Come get me. Sometimes I'll run and jump up on him. See, I, I mourn for that. I want that. I don't love people, but I love Jesus more. Amazing that you 
go through a dark hate to a peaceful love. I didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen overnight that I became that way. <laughs> That's crazy. Just driving along and all of a sudden, that piece just dropped. Maybe I put them up on the top shelf up there, I don't know. Let's see. We're going too fast. And I remember reading in Psalms where David was mourning over his son. The prophet come and spoke to him. He will give you another. There was a consequence for what he did. There's consequences for the thing we do. You know, I learned over the last couple of years, you just even thank God for his discipline. Thank God for his correction. I thank God for his mercy. I thank God that he's willing to do all these things for me. Not that you have to, but I do. thankful that I can repent. I'm thankful that I have the blood of Jesus. I'm thankful that Jesus molds and sculpts me every day. I'm thankful that I have a day to make things right. I'm thankful that I have a day that I can pray for people. I'm thankful for the food that I receive. I am thankful for being able to do these videos. I'm thankful for the communication I'm thankful for the people that are reaching out and saying, man, this is really helping. Well, praise be to God. Hopefully, we're taking the final step going into that right direction and giving all. Because if He can forgive me and deliver me, then He can't you. Now, some might say, well, you don't know my life. Very true. But let's roll the dice. See how familiar, similar our lives are. You know, I've been asked plenty of times. Have you ever been bitter towards all the things in your life? Sometimes. tell the Lord who taught me how to forgive. Why we should forgive. Forgiveness is not for the others, it's for ourselves. The quicker you can learn to forgive, the quicker you walk and live in peace. It's hard. It's really hard to pray for stuff that's happened in your life or what people have done or continue to do. Then he reminds me, I've forgiven you for all that you have done against me. And if you've done it against me, you've done it to my father. If you've done it against my father, you've done it against me. Well, I hear that, I'm going, yeah. So, uh, excited, anxious, or depressed, I don't feel pity, I feel thanksgiving that his blood was shed, even if it was just for me.
It's a journey. And I'm glad I'm on. I know some days I get tired and some days I just get so frustrated with stuff. And then I gotta ask for forgiveness. And ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to ask for forgiveness. The idea is that we learn from it. We can ask him to help us stay away from that sin. He'll give you I he'll give you ways to get out of things somehow. You end up falling right back into it. what we would do if we walked up to Jesus in a situation going, Lord, how many times am I going to ask for forgiveness for this sin? What if you said a hundred? Did it surprise you? I wonder how many people are going, yeah, it would surprise me. I wonder how many people are going, no, it wouldn't surprise me. Because our lives ain't sinful. God is not the center of our world. By far the opposite. I was putting food away this morning. I opened up my one cabin. Stuff fell. I was frustrated. I'm trying to get all the stuff put away so I can get out of here and make it on time. I think it's slow. I start thinking. Wow. Forgive me. Forgive me for complaining about food falling out my cabinet when I used to complain about going to the cabinets and there's nothing there to eat. Forgive me. someone's life even if they pass away. But when you start sitting in an area and all you think about is that person, then it becomes an idol. We don't want to do that. At all, ever. to us in many different ways. You just gotta figure out which way is coming to you today. Today's time, and look what the devil's put in our lives. We got family members of depression, family members of transgender, family members of, of the gay community, family members of denying Christ. I mean, we can go right down the list. Every family in America has some kind of mix grandchildren or children. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, I'm just saying. But the hate? We went to dinner Saturday at a restaurant. What, what two pleasant people. They were African American. Very peaceful. Very loving people. Treated you like you were a person. It had nothing to do with even a tip at that point. They're just good people. For once in a long time, you feel peace. For once in a long time, you feel there's no racial wars going on. The things that we were talking about just makes it so nice. You just 
don't want the conversation in. Then the next token, you go outside, someone drive past you, turning their head the other way, you see people on phones. It's crazy. Because we are more important than anything else got crazy. So, I don't know, just a lot of deep thought to it. So I thought I'd just come on here and share that with you all. And I'm gonna do the other one tonight. Actually, probably, I might combine two of them together. So, be looking, as always, let me know your thoughts your comments, whether it's a post or whether it's just a comment on this video, it doesn't matter. God bless you guys. May God watch over you. May God keep you safe. May God put blessings upon your table. Let the world's way never come. Let it be fulfilled today. God's plan. Let all things be done in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Love you. Until the next one.